Edwin, you're up. Come on over here. <laughs> now, before the show, we interviewed each of you, and we found out that Edwin, you hate Woody Allen. Yes, I do. Okay. Steven loves Woody Allen. Steven, you're up first. Go now. All right, three great films by Woody Allen are Manhattan, Annie Hall, and Crimes and Misdemeanors. Manhattan is an amazing use of dialogue, visuals, everything like that. The man has revolutionized the way dialogue and character talk and, and, and everything like that. Uh, I hear a lot of debates that he doesn't give good roles to women, but I feel all of his women roles are equal to his men roles. And uh, Crimes and Misdemeanors is probably perhaps uh, one of the greatest films. Ever. Woody Allen's uh, persona is very tiresome, a novice New Yorker who is paranoid and schizophrenic. Also, I, I'm tired of all the, the hoopla, the hoopla, the guy cannot act. I, uh, everyone says I love you, it's science fiction. He's playing hard to get with Julia Roberts. He's like 70 years old. Time, time. Steven, 10 seconds, go. Uh, while his last few films haven't been as great as his previous, I, I still think that he's great. The Nubbish New Yorker persona is great. It's amazing. It's so original. And there was nothing like it before Woody Allen, and there will, there will be nothing like it after Woody Allen. Well, it might be original, but it's a tiresome joke. It's the same movie over and over again. And uh, he's still neurotic, and he's never gotten any therapy. There you go. Yeah. OK. Wow. Jason Mewes, who do you think won this? Uh, I would say Edwin. Edwin! Okay. Richard Roundtree. Uh, who do you think won? I gotta go with Jason. Edwin! That means you're moving on to round three. Standing over here in our winner's circle. Great job. Tracy, how would you have voted? I think that Edwin was so good that it almost makes me not like Woody Allen. Oh! oh. Steven. Now, you saw all those people in round one. They all got tickets home. But you know what you get? You get a ticket home! <laughs> See you, Steven. One of these two is about to win $5,000 in cash and, more importantly, move on to represent the Northeast in the national finals for a chance to win this. Whoever is named the ultimate film fanatic will win another five grand for a total of $10,000. But that's not all. You'll also get IFC. That's right. For one night, IFC is all yours. Play what you want, whenever you want. It's your channel. We just work here. Now that's a cool prize, but only one of you can win. Six entered, we are down to two. Both of these players have proved they have excellent movie knowledge by surviving the first cut. Both have proved they have fanatic attitudes by surviving the great debate. But now only one will survive the Obsession War. Each player has dug deep into their closet and brought with them three items from their personal collection that they feel makes them the ultimate film fanatic of the Northeast. Basically, this is just like war when you were a kid. You show off one of your obsession items, and he shows off one of his obsession items, then the panel will decide which is more freakishly obsessive. Megan will then award that player a star. It's the best of three, so the first player to get two stars will be today's winner, the ultimate film fanatic of the Northeast. Who won the coin toss backstage? Jordan, that means you'll be going up first. Please present your first item. Well, I'm going to present my items in the uh, chronological uh, order they entered my life. Um, I've been a movie fanatic since the age of three. In the year 1977, or 78, roughly, my sister was uh, doing actually a TV commercial in New York. And in between uh, shots, she wandered off and wandered onto the soundstage where they were shooting Sidney Lumet's film, The Wiz, which I'm sure we all remember and love. And so she stole a couple of uh, snowflakes off the wall of the set, and she brought them home. And when she went off to college, I stole it from her. So there you go. Okay, Edwin. Present your first item. Well, uh, ever since I was a child, I remember once I was spending the night at my best friend's house, and we turned on the creature feature, and the name Samuel Ziarkov uh, appeared. And uh, after I saw the movie, which was Squirm, uh, I fell in love with the exploitation genre, and every film I began to watch had the name Samuel Ziarkov. In 2002, um, I heard he was going to be making a appearance at a show, and uh, he was up there in age, but. I got to meet my idol, Samuel Ziarkov. This was a year, taken a year, just before he died. He made many great films. Okay, 
So we have Jordan's snowflake from The Wiz versus Edwin's photo of him with Samuel Z. Arkoff, his lifetime hero. Tracy Lords, you're our foreman for this. Uh, you come to a decision? We like both of them, but we're gonna have to go with the snowflake. We think that they're both sentimental pieces, but we like the fact, we like the fact that Jordan actually went to the trouble of stealing this from his sister. Okay, so the jury is awarding larceny, that's okay. Edwin, please present your second item. All right, it was taken on the Fox backlot during the shooting of the first Planet of the Apes film and uh, a Lost in Space episode. It was a break between, and it was an episode of Lost in Space called Hunter's Moon, and there is this character named Megazon, who, or Megazor, who has these two henchmen who are his cronies. Anyway, during a break, the two guys from Planet of the Apes and from uh, the Lost in Space episode got together and took some pictures. So, I mean, if this is not geeked out, I don't know what it is. Uh, okay. All right, Jordan, show us what you got. All right, now I'm 13 years old, 14 years old, and I've discovered Woody Allen. And I was a little bit obsessed with the man. At the time, a book came out called The Fun with Woody Quiz Book. And uh, my uncle knew a guy who worked on a lot of Woody's films. And the guy goes up to Woody, goes, Woody, my friend's nephew really likes you. He's 13, will you sign this for me? He goes, what is that? Or I'll do my Woody. What, 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 what is that? It's The Fun with Woody Quiz Book. What? I'm in the middle of a lawsuit with these people. That's an unauthorized book. Give me that. So he writes, To Jordan, I hate this book like poison. Best Woody Allen. Okay. Panel, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, Richard Roundtree, oh, you're our foreman man. now. <laughs> I'm moving down the line. You guys got to give me a decision. This is yeah. a tough one. Well, as you said, it was difficult in this instance. Uh, but we're going to go with this total geekism Photograph. Photographs! Okay. Wow. We're tied up at one star apiece. Jordan, you're up next. Let's see it. I dedicated a lot of time last year to live up to my New Year's resolution to see a movie a day. To see 365 feature films in one year, the year 2003. And I have a document that proves it. It's my movie journal of last year. Every film I saw in chronological order, the name of the picture, the director of the picture, and a letter grade. It starts with Gangs of New York, which as you remember came out around Christmas of 2002, and it ends with Bad Santa, which came out around Christmas of 2003. You can also read this on the web at jordanhoffman.com. Okay, uh, Edwin, uh, well, I gotta I'm dying say, to see uh, what you got. I'll be, I'll be checking out your website, I guess. All right. This is something that my friend helped me get. It is the helmet that was used in Phantom of the Paradise. This is one of six that was made, and it's the only one that survived, uh, from, to the best of my knowledge. But this is one of those helmets that was used in the film for the Phantom, who is the title character, and um, my friends, you know, uh, got it through Tom Berman Studios. Okay. All right, so we've got the personal movie journal versus an amazing actual prop. Does that fit? Uh, not on this head. <laughs> okay. Jason, you're uh, representing our panel right now. Do you have an answer? It's tough because both are really good, but I'm gonna go with Jordan because I'm thinking if he's going to see a movie every day, dude ain't getting laid much. <laughs> so, so, so he's giving up a lot. That means, Jordan, you are the ultimate film fanatic of the Northeast. Come on over here. Here's your award. Great job. You get $5,000 and you get the ass end of a statue. Nice. Not bad for a half hour's nice. work. Now to get the top half of screws into that ass, you'll be coming back to our final show where you'll face off against the other regional winners from all over the country for a chance at an additional five grand and a spot programming IFC for a night and most importantly, bragging rights to the film fanatic of the entire United States. Nice. But for now, yes. enjoy this ass. Thank you. Okay, what do you have to say for yourself? This is, I mean, this is just fantastic. The $5,000 maybe, maybe will begin to pay for my student loans at NYU Film. I don't know. And uh, maybe we'll go all the way, you know? New York, New York. I'd like to thank our celebrity panel, Tracy Lords, Richard Roundtree, Jason Hughes. Thanks a lot, guys. Join us next 
time on the ultimate film fanatic, and we'll be scouring another part of the country for more obsessive film fans. Until then, 